Hello and welcome to this seminar for the Asian Development Bank's 55th annual meeting. My name is Benjamin Butcher and together with our esteemed guests we will be discussing digital transformations contribution to the green recovery. In particular we'll be focusing on what it means to make cities greener and stronger through sustainable transport strategies. We thank you for taking the time to join us for this seminar, even if, as has happened too often in the past, um, we are not able to be together in the same place. However, um, we are pre-recording these sessions and the presentations and the discussion, and we hope this will be interesting, thought-provoking, and give you some inf insights into how the technology can tackle some of the new challenges we face in this sector. The green recovery is a phrase that encapsulates the idea of not only building back to where we were pre-COVID, but to build forward to a better place that is leapfrogging towards reaching society's environmental and climate goals. In this seminar, we will be asking how transport can and should move on from COVID, but I promise we will not spend too much time talking about that. Instead, we'll be asking the panellists how to frame the new strategies and what is the role of innovation and technology. Technology enables solutions and innovation in the transport sector. It is improving the customer experience and making more open, robust and flexible services possible. But for us to succeed with these technologies, we need to avoid the pitfalls and make sure we have the right approach. And today, I hope we'll get some insight into that. To give us some insight into these solutions and challenges, we have invited some great speakers from different fields to share some of their thoughts and ideas. Our first speaker is Mr. Wu Chong Ong, the Managing Director General at the Asian Development Bank. Mr. Ong joined ADB in 1993. Um, he will be drawing on his wide range of experience from there and also the private sector, um, including his time at ADB as the Chief Compliance Officer at ADB's Sustainable Development and Climate Change Department, where he was leading knowledge management and innovation work. Our next speaker, Dr. Jayak Oh, has been the president of the Korean Transport Institute, COTI, since 2017. And during his 30 years at COTI, he has overseen cutting-edge projects and development in the field of transport and logistics. He's played a major role in innovating transport systems for carbon neutral, implementing public transport-oriented or policies, and formulating national transport infrastructure plans for the Korean government. Dr. Oh is also currently the president of the East Asian Transport Society, EASTS, and we'll be asking about the innovation in the field of transport. Finally, we also have a presentation from Hikari Goya, who is a specialist in the field of transport ICT at NEC Corporation. Um, she has worked on projects and business development in the Asia region, and she'll be giving us some of her insight on these topics. Now that I've introduced today's presenters, let's hear from them and ask them a few questions. It's my great pleasure to provide my thoughts on this important topic and how we at ADB, through our technical and lending operations, are supporting cities across Asia and the Pacific to become greener and more resilient. Ensuring inclusive access through people-focused urban mobility solution is essential if cities are to function effectively and drive economic development and growth across the region. We are at a critical junction on our development pathways. The COVID-19 pandemic of the last two and a half years has greatly impacted us all. We have learned to work and interact in very different ways, and the consequences of this are profound and are likely to be long-lasting. The key to a better future is to build back better for a greener and more resilient world. Out of adversity, we often see accelerated advancements in innovations, including new technologies. Some of these are directly relevant to urban access and mobility. We have seen a large increase in active mobility with many pop-up cycle lanes or improvements to pedestrian facilities. However, we have also seen the downside with a shift away from urban public transport and an increase in private modes of transport, notably motorcycles. It is our strong belief that large, dense cities in Asia can only function with a high-capacity integrated public transport network at the center of urban transport systems. The car-centric urban sprawl seen in some parts of the world simply cannot work in Asia, and thus to ensure inclusive urban access and mobility, we must provide transport systems that move the highest number of people in the limited available space. The systems must be attractive and affordable to ensure inclusivity, provide citywide coverage, and they must also be green to reduce emissions at both the local and global levels. 
Asian cities have experienced astonishing rates of urbanization. In the 1950s, the urban population in the region accounted for just 20%. This has risen dramatically with the share of urban population projected to rise to over half the region's population, or estimated 2.5 billion people by 2040. This urban explosion has meant that cities are the center of economic activity and account for almost three-fourths of economic activities in many of our developing member countries. Providing sustainable mobility in these urban areas is fundamental to development. It allows people to access education, health services, and economic opportunities, and in so doing helps to lift people out of poverty and stimulate economic growth. Transport should provide access for all and do so in the most inclusive manner. At ADB, we define sustainable transport as accessible, affordable, environmentally friendly, economically and financially sound, as well as safe. Many cities across the region still require considerable investment in urban transport infrastructure, but this must be provided in conjunction with enhanced transport operation and improved institutional structures. ADB estimates the infrastructure gap in Asia requires $26 trillion in investment between 2016 to 2030, or $1.7 trillion per year. Over 20% of this required financing is in urban transport systems. While the investment needs are large, the operational needs are equally large. For example, operational costs of the metro system over a 25 to 30 year period will be greater than the initial investment cost for construction. Funding and institutional capacity development are essential to deliver people-centric and sustainable urban transport systems. At ADB, we see a need for a new urban transport paradigm, one that makes cities livable by providing sustainable mobility that adapt to climate changes, reduce greenhouse gas emissions, ensure clean air, and does so while providing affordable, safe, and inclusive mobility. An example of such an approach is the ADB assistance in Peshawar, Pakistan. The project has constructed the city's first bus rapid transit corridor with 31 stations and facilities including bicycle lanes as well as safety features for women and children. The system has improved air quality, reduced traffic congestion, and benefited an estimated half a million people. Another such example is the recently approved project for development of pedestrian walkways in Manila, Philippines. The walkways will link mass transit stations to surrounding areas, allowing easy access for pedestrians, including the elderly, pregnant women, young children, and people with disabilities. There is a range of technical solutions that should be applied across all our cities. Intelligent Transport Systems, ITS, can greatly improve operations and make the most of the limited transport infrastructure and available urban space. This can be as simple as integrated traffic signals that allow green waves for vehicles to pass through or prioritization for public transport at junctions. There are also enhanced technologies such as vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle or vehicle-to-infrastructure technologies that will greatly enhance capacity and throughput of transport systems. Traffic management systems need both investment and capacity development, but the return on such investment will be large, allowing much more efficient and effective use of available space, and in so doing, reduce congestion and emissions. Technology advances in data collection, analysis, and use can revolutionize transport systems and must be an area of increased focus. We have planned and operated in the dark for far too long. Technologies are also providing the opportunity to place the sector on a net zero pathway and to ultimately decarbonize the sector. I'm pleased to say that Asia and the Pacific is leading the world in e-mobility, accounting for 97% of total e-vehicles worldwide. This is primarily because of the dominance of two-wheelers and three-wheelers. ADB has supported a number of e-mobility assistance from buses to ferries across many economies in the region and we have prepared policy toolkits that outline pathways to net zero transport. We should acknowledge that transport activities are and will continue to grow as cities, populations, and economic activities in increase. Demand for travel will continue to increase even with more people working from home or attending meetings virtually. Transport must address its negative externalities such as congestion and emissions. 
To this end, the ADB has committed that our sovereign operations will be aligned with the Paris Agreement by July 2023. In line with this, we have seen a number of ADB projects that promote decarbonization of the sector, such as the support for the electric ferry fleet for mass rapid transport in Bangkok. Let me conclude by noting that we are probably in the middle of the greatest transformation in the way we get to our destination. The last few years showed us a new paradigm for urban mobility with the prioritization of pedestrian travel and non-motorized options, as well as the introduction of the new technologies and ways of working or learning. However, demand for travel will continue to increase and so will the greenhouse gas emissions. The international climate agenda calls for an accelerated change and the full decarbonization for the sector linked with the power generation from clean sources. Urban transport must become greener, an early adopter of technology and keep pace with the dynamic and uncertain future. I reiterate that the COVID pandemic recovery and the delivery on the international agreements are not mutually exclusive issues. In fact, they both stimulate the drastic shift to sustainable transport and the transformation we are collectively committed to achieve by 2030 and beyond. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ohm, for your insightful presentation. Next, I would like to hand over to President O oh of EASTS for his presentation. Good morning and uh, good afternoon. My name is Jae Hak Oh, the president of Korea Transport Institute and also president of EAST. Uh, the topic uh, of my presentation today is about uh, the future of mobility. As you know, future of mobility is very broad and big topic. Thus, I'm going to explain the future of mobility in terms of automation, decarbonization, and sharing. Uh, my presentation uh, will be as follows. First, I'm going to talk about the concept and the challenges of the future mobility. And the second is the mega trend and the impact to the future, future mobility. And the third, uh, directions of mobility transformation and the poses some issues and approach to be taken for uh, mobility transformation. Uh, first, uh, uh, in these days, uh, we are talking about, uh, many people talk about uh, are using the word of uh, uh, terminology of mobility rather than transport. What is the difference between uh, transport and mobility? In my understanding, uh, mobility is the, uh, uh, mobility is, is uh, more uh, responding to specific individual lead, uh, in term, individual lead, uh, uh, but the, the concept of transport is the is quite uh, the, the the group uh, movement uh, or the. It's more uh, emphasized uh, from the view of the, uh, the supplier's uh, the service or operators. Uh, it is important to understand uh, three uh, externalities uh, caused by transport. Uh, most of transport policies and infrastructure development are uh, made to solve these three externalities uh, uh, caused by uh, transport movement. First of all, first one is congestion and accident cost, and the third is environment cost. These are uh, caused by individually, but actually each, uh, each in individual uh, does not recognize uh, uh, these uh, externalities are very important. So these externalities is, should be solved by, by the society or government. Uh, 
to solve the such externalities, uh, the traditional transportation policy efforts can be summarized into three big, uh, the, the three big elements. First of all is the infrastructure development. Second one is efficient responding to motorization. Third is uh, the, the public uh, transport promotion. So the, in, in the first, uh, in, in the first most of government or countries are uh, trying to uh, uh, the, the trying to make the these uh, uh, transport policies or uh, development efforts to be effectively uh, uh, executed. But but uh, in the future, uh, uh, there are some the the major factors. Uh, uh, accelerating the, the transport transformation. First one is the, the climate change uh, uh, crisis. Uh, second one is the post-industrial revolution. Third one is the uh, demographic change. Fourth one is global uh, pandemic. These mega trends are uh, the importance or weight of these mega trends are uh, bearing from country to country, actually. But in the future, especially in the next coming decade, uh, the, uh, the future mobility, uh, the, the, the next decade will be a decisive time for the future mobility and its transformation. The, I wanted to explain about the meaning of the future mobility. Uh, the future mobility is a first, first characteristic is the great transformation since first industrial revolution. It's very great, uh, fundamentally changed, changing the, our society or our transportation system. Second characteristic is the uh, technology driven uh, changes. Third one is the, this, the, this mobile transformation quite much related to or uh, corresponding to the, the major global mega trend, the, the climate change crisis, post industrial revolution, demographic changes, and uh, global pandemic. Post this, the future mobility will also uh, make a big impact on employment and job creations. Also, of course, uh, the future mobility should, uh, the, should solve the uh, problems of the, uh, the externalities, which I just before uh, explained. I am going uh, to, to, let's talk about the challenges of the future mobility. Uh, first one is the minimizing congestion and accident and environmental cost. Second is, is the second the challenge is satisfying individual demand and enhancing mobility service. Third is revitalizing the economy and the transport industries. Fourth one is strengthening global competitiveness in transportation sector. So future mobility should be, should be prepared to, to make the, uh, to, 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 to face the, these four challenges and uh, the, the, uh, the responding successfully. Uh, the, especially the post-industrial revolution, climate change crisis, COVID-19 pandemic, these three global the mega trend are especially important to, to the, uh, the, what is the, the, the future of mobility or the transportation uh, transformation. Uh, I already explained a little bit uh, 
uh, of this mega trend, uh, I, I will skip this uh, uh, the global mega trend. As you know, the post industrial revolution, meaning of the post industrial revolution, and the, uh, the, the climate change crisis and the transport, transport less funding, and also the COVID 19 pandemic also uh, has been changing the uh, transport and the, uh, make the great impact to the transportation industry as well. Uh, directions of mobility transformation. Uh, uh, for the future mobility, I assume three uh, major directions of transport, uh, mobility transformation are likely to move forward. First one is automation. For example, the autonomous driving or unmanned uh, aerial vehicles or urban air, air mobility. And the second one is decarbonization or electrification. So the, the, the automobile industry will be completely changed to adapt to the decarbonization. And the fourth one is the, the sharing and uh, integration. Sharing and integration already uh, the, uh, moving quite uh, fast, fastly, fast uh, already. Uh, first direction is automa automation. Uh, some exper experimental projects on autonomous vehicle is, uh, and the urban air mobility is in progress, but uh, still the commercialization is, is quite uncertain. Uh, there are uh, the great prospects uh, of the, the mobility optimization uh, to the social economic impact. For example, the, this, the, the automa automation will have to increase in, in the road capacity, the infrastructure capacity, decrease in traffic accident, and also the decrease in the commuting time and the, uh, the social cost as well. For example, the congestion. However, the also the automation also will lead to decrease in employment and also the creating some security, safety, the privacy problems as well, and also the, uh, the, the, the public the compliance and the social conflict are also or should be solved as well. The second direction, decarbonization. Decarbonization, uh, as you know already, now is in good progress, uh, responding to climate change crisis. Uh, this, this, uh, 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 the, the progress in terms of the mass electrification of the automobiles and the green transition and also the demand management uh, I mean, mainly the reducing the use of the private cars and the promoting the public transportation as well. Uh, this also uh, has uh, uh, the, uh, a lot of future tasks. For example, the role of, role of the electric and the hydrogen electric vehicles, uh, and also the how to finance uh, mass electrification of vehicles. For example, the building, the, the charging infrastructure, and also the battery price competitiveness as well. The third direction is sharing and integration. Sh sharing is quite old topic. Already we are sharing transport through the uh, mass transit system. But in these days, uh, car mobility, especially the car sharing or the, the ride sharing, is a very important issue to, to in, 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 the, in, in sharing, actually. But the, uh, some countries are, uh, uh, but this, the sharing, uh, direct, the direction of sharing has some the various uh, the, the issues, the social issues from country to country. 
uh, this the sharing will lead to decline in auto ownership. So the uh, the auto industry might be less competitive, and also the uh, the sharing of the private cars also will lead to decline in uh, public transport uh, the, the the ridership and 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 thus the the public transport industry will uh, will have a problem of the, of the operation deficit financial deficit. Integration is also a very uh, traditional topic. Uh, I wanted to uh, define the, the concept uh, of the integration is making design of infrastructure and operation of transport mode into a seamless transportation from origin to destination to meet user's need in a sustainable way. The, this integration can be uh, can be made, uh, for example, the through the planning and investment, design and construction, operation, institution. These all four are quite important. But in these days, operation um, uh, aspect becomes more important through the uh, what is so called the uh, the information and the communication technology. So there are uh, many issues, key issues relating to mobility transformation. For example, the auto industry, uh, auto in the industry will will might be a uh, for example the, the internal combustion engine automobile industry might be will will face uh, the, the 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 collapse or change. And also, it will require huge uh, development of new infrastructure, digital infrastructures. And the fourth one is mobility service industry also will be changed. This mobility service industry will face some the, uh, the, the, the social conflict with the existing the, the transportation uh, industry, such as the uh, taxi industry, and also the, the, the regulation or uh, the, 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 the R&D, and also some the, the financing methods, uh, financing the social security. These are all related to the, the success successful transformation of the of the future mobility. The finally the, the the mobility transformation will be made through the comprehensive approach. What I mean by the comprehensive approach is the uh, the as, as I already explained Automobile industry change, infrastructure develop, digital infrastructure development, and also the new mobility service, and the finally is the new regulations or the new financing systems are required to be changed to corresponding to the uh, successful uh, the, the, the mobility transformation. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, President O, for a very interesting presentation. Finally, uh, we will have a presentation from Ms. Goya from NEC about Transport ICT. Hello, everyone. My name is Hikari Goya from NEC Corporation. I'm in charge of business development of Transport ICT. Today, I'd like to present ICT's contribution for sustainable transportation system. Climate change is processing rapidly and causes enormous damage to cities and citizens every year. Although there may be a relaxation of COVID-19 lockdowns, transportation is still one of the main factors of environmental issues, and it contributes to about 24% of carbon emissions directly related to global energy. Among them, carbon dioxide emissions from passenger cars account for 41%. As Mr. Wu Zhongwen mentioned, 
Transport activities are and will continue to grow as cities' population and economic activity increase, and demand for travel will also continue to increase accordingly, even with more people working from home or attending meetings virtually. Therefore, promoting the modal shift for pa from passenger cars to public transportation is crucial to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Despite this background, which is increasing the importance of public transportation, there is not always, but are often challenges that discourage passengers from using them, such as poor passenger experience and operational inefficiency. ICT has an important role to play as a solution to these problems. ICT can address many of the challenges of public transportation. For example, ICT can gather more accurate data that can optimize operational sessions and route bus routes. More accurate real-time data helps best passengers plan their journey more easily and reduce frustration from the experience. Transport ICT systems, such as automated vehicle location, depot management system, scheduling and dispatching system bring operational efficiency. Moreover, passenger information systems can provide accurate real-time operation information so that passengers instantly know the bus schedules together with the latest estimated time of arrival. Automated fare collection systems remove the inconvenience of cash collection by transforming to contactless smart card payment. Today, I'd like to introduce a project in Ahmedabad, India, as an example of a successful case, highlighting how ICT contributes to the safety and convenience of public transportation users and how it has a positive impact on environmental issues. Before moving on to the detailed explanation, let me share the video introduction of ITMS in Ahmedabad. Smart city is not something that you define and say this is how it is. Whole idea here is, how do I make your life easy? We ferry 0.8 million passengers per day, which is now with a modern ITMS system. Before the project came in, it's a manual system. When ITMS comes in, we know the math. If you have a car, you go to any station, tap in and tap out, and your journey is recorded, there's no human interface. All the buses have to be fit in with uh, the GPS uh, systems. They have to have PIS inside the bus. The station should have camera and the PIS. And all this infrastructure at the station and the buses then get converged into the command and control center that we have built, which looks at the math of whether the routes are being followed, whether what are the peak routes, what are the delays, etc. And then we have the vehicle planning and scheduling systems. We are running 1,000 vehicles. How do we allocate those vehicles so that we get the max uh, benefit or fleet management out of those vehicles? And we have the depot management systems for that. The whole thing is, when you weave so many softwares, then there is business intelligence which helps you to understand if there was somebody to take a decision. How do you allocate your buses to a particular route, which buses are doing losses, which are uh, actually uh, very favorite with the people, and maybe you can increase your allocation of buses there. So all that math on one uh, single uh, format, which is the MIS or the dashboard, or business intelligence, the fleet is owned by the contractor. And there are several SLAs which are linked to it. What was the total kilometers run? Uh, how did your drivers behave? How did the acceleration happen? How did the braking happen? All these things then decide the package to be paid at the end of the month. So this entire thing earlier used to be manual. Now this is software based and therefore it is becoming more efficient. We are getting savings of somewhere around uh, 50 to 60 lakh rupees per month, which is, which is sizable. The team has worked very hard to deliver, it's a complex thing. And uh, I do expect that with the kind of depth and breadth of uh, NEC and ENCODE both, they, have, they are definitely very capable of delivering more and better. Orchestrating a brighter world. 
NEC. Before installing any seed systems, Ahmed Bar's manual, manual systems suffered from many operational issues, such as poor route planning, unreliable bus schedules, excessive waiting time, inconvenient and inconsistent cash collections, and so forth. NEC implemented an intelligent transport management system to more than 1,000 buses, and it's been in operation since 2018, improving both operations and passenger experience. The introduction of the ITMS had a positive impact on Ahmed bus environment and helped improve passenger experience and promote a modal shift from passenger vehicles to public transportation. The improvement in passenger experience is estimated to have increased the ridership by 8.7%. On top of this, the bus schedules and route optimization done by our ITMS realized a 9.5% reduction of total bus mileage, ultimately helping to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Another use case I'd like to introduce is from Hiroshima in Japan. Hiroshima Electric Railway Company and NEC have worked on a range of long-term tra transport ICT initiatives. Since 2014, NEC's AFC system and clearing house system have been in operation and providing cashless transaction and interpretability among multimodal, uh, multiple transport operators. Following the success of the implementation of AFC and clearing house system, Hiroshima Electric Railway Company continued working with NEC to deliver a mass service called Mobile. In addition to the basic features of the digital ticketing, services for tourism promotions are provided and integrated with the last mile service in the Hiroshima area. As a further collaboration, Hiroshima Electric Railway Company and NEC have begun to develop a next generation payment system called ABT, account based ticketing aiming of starting service in 2024. ABT will support various authentication media and in the future, further collaboration with other transportation modes and services among city and travel destinations can be expected. The first collaboration was the implementation of AFC and clearing house system. NEC successfully implemented AFC for branded card Pass B, which went live in 2014. The clearing house enabled interpretability, which clears and settles the event revenue among 33 operators, allowing passengers to use Pass B on multiple modes of transportation, including buses, trams, trains, ferries, and cable cars. As of March 2021, about 1.9 million smart cars have been issued and are supporting the lives of Hiroshima residents. The mass service mobility was implemented to integrate local needs with regional tourism promotion. Hiroshima found that many tourists preferred renting a car because mobility service services covering tourism sites were in solos, making the use of multiple public transport services complex and confusing. The new mass service will be a one-stop window, seamlessly offering the mobility service to visitors and tourists across the service providers by providing end-to-end -end journey planner, multimodal integrated ticketing, coupons, rental car reservation, and bike sharing reservation. As future initiatives, we are looking to tie up the mass service platform with other social services such as medical service, social welfare, and an administrative service to reinforce the mobility for local citizens who are geographically inaccessible to public transportation in the future. This represents the potential for further extension of mass service and shows how they also can tackle many wider issues faced by cities. As further collaboration, Hiroshima Electric Railway Company and NEC have begun to develop new ticketing service using ABT methods, account-based ticketing, which is a cloud-hosted service to manage user accounts online, meaning the account information such as balance and travel history is managed on the cloud server. This collaboration is the first announcement in Japan of the commercialization of an ABT ticket ABT-based ticketing system that is compatible with commuter passes and provides support for a complex fare policy for commuters.
ABT will be able to support a variety of authentication media and is expected to have collaboration with other means of transportation and a wide, wide range of services among cities and travel destinations. In summary, for sustainable transportation, model shift from passenger cars to public transportation is crucial. But at the same time, public transportation often faces the challenges that discourage passengers from using them, such as poor passenger experience and operational inefficiency. We believe that ICT can be the key to solving these challenges by improving passenger experience and operation. As seen in Ahmedabad in Hiroshima, NEC is providing a wide range of ICT solutions to help maximize the value of public transportation. In addition to addressing existing issues, we believe that ICT has capability to add more value, not only in the transportation domain, but also through further collaboration with other domains. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Goya, for your presentation. Now, I would like to dig into the topics raised by these presentations a little bit more and ask our guest presenters a few questions. Mr. Um, you mentioned that there have been positives and negatives from COVID and that we need to keep the good parts and move on from the negatives. But if we are not moving towards pre-COVID or pre-lockdown transport solutions, what are the kinds of transport services and solutions that we should be aiming for? COVID-19 saw many cities shut down or significantly reduce their transport services, it also resulted in concern among passengers who fear the close proximity to other passengers. The combination of these factors led people to look at alternative ways to travel, some positive such as walking and cycling, and some less so, such as the shift to private transport modes, notably motorcycles. The streets of Manila now resemble those of many other South or Southeast Asian cities, with an explosion of motorcycles for personal use, as well as for deliveries and taxi type services. A sustainable balance must be restored, public transport must be promoted, and placed as the main mode of transport for all. It's the only way for the large demand for travel can be met in the limited space available. Well-functioning cities have transport systems that are able to carry around 75% of passenger trips by public transport, walking and cycling. President Oh, one of the effects of the COVID pandemic has not only been a loss of passengers, but also an increase in personal mobility and sharing services. As we move out of COVID restrictions, do you think we'll see people moving back to the old ways of commuting, or have we seen a permanent change in how people travel? Uh, I think it, uh, uh, if I say uh, uh, the, the final answer, mm. uh, the uh, certainly, uh, the transport uh, behavior uh, and the transport demand uh, will not return to previous uh, situation. Okay. Rather, uh, I think it's the, it will make the, a fundamental uh, the, uh, structural change uh, after the, the, uh, the, the, what's the post post-pandemic era in the in the in the in the in the post-pandemic era mm -hmm. as we see the during the post 90 pandemic people uh, have the different uh, what is the the what is the 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 the, the, what is the living uh what is the living patterns uh? yes for example the working from home the online economic activity such as online shopping, and also the uh, the less the public transport use, and more individual public transport mode, and also the people are more conscious about their the health and the safety than before. Uh, this uh, uh, the 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 uh, contributed to the uh, what is the uh, the the. Uh, increase of the uh, the, the in individual transport mode mm -hmm. and the uh, the what is the decrease uh, of the decrease in the public transportation usage I think uh, yes uh, overally the pandemic uh, contributed to the, the the decrease in pub uh, decrease in transport demand 
uh, but uh, the, as the, the COVID-19 is slight, the, the gradually uh, diminished or resolved, uh, I think it's the transport demand, uh, the uh, return to the the level of the transfer demand is is uh, is likely uh, return to the the previous level. I think, uh, especially the uh, the 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 aviation and the Polish transport area is a hard hit. Uh, yeah. Uh, because the because of the uh, the the the, uh, the the because those modes are uh, more affected from the social distance. And yes. also the infection peer, I think. So the uh, in the future, it is necessary to support the, the re rebuild the public transportation industry, and also the uh, the the uh, especially the uh, social security net for the the laborers who are working for the. Uh, public transportation in the uh, public transportation industry and also the logistics uh, uh, delivery service area thank you very much thank you very much that's very interesting um, I know for myself with um, after covid I need to be starting to think about my health a little bit more I've been in yeah. the, yes I've been in the uh, house a little bit too long okay thank you very much so we'll move on to the next question okay president O if we are to prepare for the next wave of COVID or the next pandemic, do we also need to think about more flexibility in our systems so that they can adapt to disasters and pandemics more easily? And what might that look like? And how will mobility play a part in this? Uh, of course, it's the, uh, along with the pandemic, COVID-19 pandemic, mm. we have more uh, uh, frequent, uh, uh, what is the, the frequent, uh, frequent, the frequently the disasters, uh, such as the, the drought and the wet, the what is the heavy flood, and any kind of the fires, uh, natural fires, uh, something like that. I think transportation system should more flexibly respond to those, the 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 what is the disasters and the problems, actually. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for example, uh, if I say the uh, about a month ago, uh, the Seoul metropolitan area uh, had a very uh, heavy rain and the flood, even wow. in the very expensive area of the city. You see, but as you as you might see from the uh, the television news, the 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 what is the urban uh, urban road are. Uh, uh, what is flooded with uh, yes, like a yes, river, yes, like yes. a river, and the cars are floated over the <laughs> over the road, over the river, something uh, road river, something like this. You see, so I think in the future uh, we have to uh, respond and prepare for the such extreme weather situations. I think uh, 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 COVID nineteen brought the same situation, same laser, same issues, same problems. To our societies, so, so yes. we have, to, for example, the uh, typically in the airport, uh, we have to have a uh, new facilities. Uh, for example, segregate the what is the people from the different uh, different uh, countries, uh, different mm -hmm. regions. Uh, also, the we have a new the separate uh, new the uh, separate the immigration process, something like this. Uh, so airport should be redesigned in the future, I think. Like, likewisely, likely the 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 what is the public transport system such as the subways or metros, their stations should be redesigned to deal with uh, some the infections uh, in the case of the COVID-19 pandemic, I think. So uh uh the increase the increase to increase the safety and the health uh, issue health uh, the the our the traditional old the the, the the transport system including the infrastructure design of the highways the pedestrian roads something like this 
should be redesigned to cope with the new demand and the new travel behavior. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's it. Very interesting. So some long-term implications for these changes, especially in design and planning. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, so the next question, Mr. Ohm. Asia is often said to be a key region in tackling global warming and climate change. How important is the Asian transport market in tackling these issues? And how is ADB promoting innovation to tackle environmental challenges and solutions? There is an infrastructure deficit and large investment gap across the region covering all sectors. Urban transport requires considerable investment in both infrastructure and operations. Metro rail systems must be built to carry the highest passenger volumes. The bus services must be modernized and vehicles improved, including electric buses. Walkways and cycle lanes must be given much greater focus on both planning and investment. It is not a case of infrastructure versus people-centric, but that the infrastructure must be fundamentally people-centric. So, President Ano, the climate change is one of the most pressing questions that our society faces. You mentioned a number of ways in which transport systems can help tackle this problem. The move to all electric systems is clearly a priority. But can you give us some more examples of how mobility can help tackle climate change? Mm -hmm. I think it's the, the, the amount of or level of the, 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 the greenhouse gas emissions from the transport mode uh, are various from country to country. For example, the South Korea is quite uh, around the foot, uh, around 30.5 percent of the total emissions, uh, the, the emissions in total. But for example, the United States, uh, I understand the maybe the, uh, the transport contribution is over 30 percent. Mm. Okay, so the uh, uh, the usually the 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 uh, the contribution of the from the transportation mode transport system is, is coming after the 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 what is the the energy sector and the manufacturing sector yes. and still is quite high okay so the usually uh, to reduce the uh, the greenhouse gas emission CO2 emission CO2 from the transport sector. Uh, mostly, we, we people uh, experts are recommending three ways. One is the electrification, electrification cars, electrification trucks, elect electrification railways, electrification the, the what is the the, the 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 even the ships, boats, something like this. And the second one is the the, the transport demand management. For example, the reducing unnecessary travels, something like this. Huh? And uh, another one is the, the what is the, 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 the shift to the uh, low emission, the low greenhouse gas emission, the transport mode, such as the railway or public transport mode. Huh? Yes. And even the, uh, suddenly, even the, we, we, we wanted to recommend the use of the non-motorized transport mode, like uh, walking and the bicycle, something like this. Uh, so there are many, uh, many ways, but uh, it, it should be uh, uh, the different from country to country, the, taking into consideration, taking into account their the, the transportation characteristics, okay? Mm. In a way to the, the what is the, Reduce the the side effect, uh, the the what is the inconvenience, uh, and maximize the what is the 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 the, the, the maximize the reduction in the in the the what is the greenhouse gas emissions, something like this. Uh. Yes. And also the most important thing is not only technology and the infrastructure assistance, but also the some the regulations or some the legal framework. Uh, uh, to provide some the, the, the incentives uh, so the people are encouraged uh, to, to, to behave uh, in a way of some the, what is the 
incentive system, following the incentive system, something like this. Uh? So the I think it's the the carbon tax or the the pure tax uh, is very important. Also, some the uh, the subsidies are very important actually. But uh, I I think it's the the, the electrification mm. is a very uh, good. Uh, and the very effective way, but uh, it's not easy because it should be supported by the <coughs> automobile industry and also the very expensive, also the 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 the, the, the what is the the charging uh, electric charging infrastructure something like this. So it will take time, I think. Thank you. Understood. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, so next we'll move on to the, sec the questions around innovation. Ms. Goya, so climate change is a problem on such a large scale, and we've been hearing how holistic, well-coordinated approaches are needed on the macro scale. But how can IT technology help tackle these issues? Yeah, so climate change is certainly a problem on a large scale, and we also believe that holistic and well-coordinated approach is required. And under such a situation, ICT, uh, be we believe that ICT has a, a potential to be a game changer by drastically changing the existing methods. And as I, uh, as I mentioned in the presentation, um, it is the case that uh, transportation is one of the major factors in terms of carbon emissions. But as seen in the uh, Amitabhad case, uh, ICT can contribute to environmental improvement both by enhancing uh, customer experience and promoting model shift and improving the uh, operational, in, in, operational effici efficiency. Yeah. So this is because uh, we have to make the passengers want to choose the public transportation, but uh, it is very hard to force them to do this. So uh, by making the service easier to use, easier to understand and easier to choose, the citizens will from themselves uh, reduce the, passing, uh, reduce the uh, car journeys. And finally, if we give passenger information about how they are helping the environment by choosing the public transportation, we can help them make the better choices. Now, one, one further question, President O. When you spoke about some of the issues around automation, um, which included the impact on employment, um, and also you, you touched on sort of issues around privacy and security. Um, I thought that was very interesting. And we've heard today about the benefits of the use of data. How do you think governments and transport agencies should create policy to ensure that data is used in the right way and foster innovation? Yes, the data is very important. Many people say data is the rise of, rise of the, of the post-industrial revolution, OK? Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, the rice is the very useful, very effective, but it is very difficult to to to, to use the uh, data effectively. Mm. Okay, for example, the uh, even in Korea, in these days, uh, uh, there are many uh, the what is the 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 useful, very very useful data from, for example, the. I say the mobile data. Mm. So everybody using the mobile phones. Uh? Yes. So the, we can extract some useful travel information from the people's movement behavior from the mobile data. Okay. Yes. And yes. the second data is the car navigation. You know, the, you use the navigation software every equipment every day. So the navigation data provides some the the, the GPS, uh, the trajectory mm -hmm. of the car movement, okay? So that is also very, very useful and important. Third, third important data is the, the public transportation card data. You know, the, when you use the public transportation, you use the card data, mm -hmm. the, what is the payment data, so the we can uh, the have the uh, extract the the, what is the people's uh, uh, the boarding or, or the what is the the, the movement the use of the public transportation the trajectory just something like this yes, you see yes, yes. Yeah. so those are very very huge data and uh, the and also the very uh, use very useful data so 
for transport policy making and the planning process, you see? So everybody agree with that. But problem is there are several problems. First of all, the the the, the data availability is not easy. Mm. So it's the 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 organizations or companies which produce the those data are not very uh, are not are not very helpfully helpful to provide uh, you see? Yes, yes, yes. share the data. So so it's the um, sharing of data. Sharing data is not is a difficult issue. Huh? Yes. Of course, there are various reasons. They say the privacy problem, or sometimes security problem, sometimes cost problem, because the 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 what is the processing of the those raw data are very expensive and difficult. You see, to to be available to the, the what is the the the, the users uh, companies. Uh, you see. So it's the I I recommend we need we need a kind of some social agreement over the data. Of course, is the the role of government is very important. So uh, the 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 production and the manipulation and this and the dissemination of data it should be. The, what is the monitored and the planned and the the what is the, what is the managed by the government mm. uh, under the government policy and under under the government budget uh, budget support uh, and then the it will create the some the the social benefit in overall I think uh, uh, so the I I think is the so this is very uh, the the what is the the important and the uh, the uh, also the very the uh, the, the 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 crucial uh, the 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 decisive issue for the success of the uh, post industrial revolution, especially in transport and the mobility uh, the industry. I think. Thank you very much. Yeah. Ms. Goya, today we heard a little bit about the importance of data, but how does data by itself actually improve services and help tackle the larger issues at the metropolitan or national level? Yeah, so as you pointed out, uh, data is accumulating through the use of ICT, and data utilization is drawing more attention these days. And uh, there are certainly still many challenges, such as data ownership and privacy. Uh, but the pot uh, we believe the potential of the data uh, utilization is quite huge. And for example, in the transportation sector, um, I AI can analyze and uh, analyze the data and optimize the operational schedules for transport operators. And in addition to the traffic data, um, by connecting all kinds of data for entire city, uh, we believe that uh, it can maximize the value of value at the uh, city level beyond the existing framework. So more than um, more data and better data uh, leads to the better planning and better policy. And it can also make it easier for transport planners to set clear goal, goals like targets and KPIs for level of levels of CO2 minimum operational standards, etc. And we have seen how this data uh, led transformation and improved tra transport services time and time again. So we'd like to continue promotion of such initiatives. Thank you. Ah, Mr. Ong. How should we think about the balance between investment in infrastructure versus people-centric services? Transport currently accounts for around 23% of total energy-related CO2 emissions, and without immediate action, this could rise to 40% by 2030. Much of this growth will occur in developing Asia, where rapid economic development is increasing the demand for travel of both passengers and freight. At ADB, we are promoting the decarbonization of the sector, we are pushing electric vehicles where the technology and operations make sense, such as in urban bus systems. We are also piloting assistance in the not-so-low-hanging fruit to push technologies and acceptance further, notably in e-ferries such as the ADB-supported assistance in Bangkok, Thailand. We see the transport sector is at the critical stage in its development. Policies and programs must be developed that set out decarbonization pathways for sector.
Transport will be a major battleground in terms of future CO2 emissions. Urgent action is required to set the sector on an alternate pathway. Um, so, President Oh, in your presentation you mentioned that the next decade will be decisive in establishing transport mobility. Um, Asia is known as a region for, of innovation. Can you give some examples of where Asia is now, or maybe where you'd like to see Asia taking the lead in achieving mobility transformation? You know, the Asia is the, uh, uh, the, the in Asia, mm -hmm. the population is continue to increasing, you see? Yes. And also, the uh, there are many uh, big metropolitan cities, uh, metropolitan regions, uh, with a very high population density, okay? Mm. And uh, apart from, different from the European or North American cities, uh, most in the, the, the Asian cities uh, has a less, uh, the, has the less developed the public transport systems. Mm. Public transport systems which are less developed, for example, the subways or metro, uh, bus system, something like you see. Yes. So the mostly they are uh, relying on the uh, bicycles or the motorbikes or the some the the, the what is the very uh, the traditional the what is the uh, the uh, automobile something like this. You see. Yes. Yes. In my, I'm saying the 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 the, the, the share of the public the Formal normal transportation system is still very low. Huh? So the in for for Asian cities, uh, uh, I think we we uh, we need we uh, we we need to invent uh, different approaches, uh, different uh, policies, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, taking into taking into account the the some the the Asian correct, uh, the transport uh, characteristics, uh, something like this. You see. Yes. Uh, so I recommend, for example, the demand uh, demand specific demand responding transport systems, or the bus system with the BRT, or the environmentally friendly electric motorbike and the autobike and the motorbikes. Uh, those are quite uh, the useful. Also the the Uber like Grab and the Uber like the what is the 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 the, the ride hailing services are also very important to, to make use of the the mobile phone something like this. Uh, so the some cities are trying to build uh, heavy rails, uh, but I I think those are uh, if we are rich enough, uh, if we are if you have a uh, what is the uh, rich enough, and if you if you have a uh, there's a plenty of the good uh, financial resources. It's okay, but I think it's the it is very very uh, difficult and the expensive and the taking long time to build the uh, uh, what is the the urban railway network uh, in 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 cities. Uh? So I recommend uh, uh, the more uh, uh, the different approaches uh, uh, to to make use of the. Uh, information and uh, communication technologies uh, in these days. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Ms. Goya, in the examples you gave us, um, service innovation delivers, delivers many benefits, but one of the main benefits is a better customer experience. Why is this so important? Yeah, so uh, in many countries, uh, public transportation is often not convenient and is often avoided by customers uh, due to the concerns about the quality. And uh, that is uh, often the cause of profitability challenge to the operators as well. So uh, increasing passenger convenience utilizing ICT uh, leads to the increase in ridership and the Aminabad case is a good example of this. Also, um, as Mr. Wujong mentioned, uh, sustainable mobility service allows people to access the uh, economic opportunities, and that helps to lift people out of the poverty and stimulate the economic growth. So we believe that ICT can uh, transform the public transportation into a sustainable one uh, by enhancing customer experience. 
And on top of that, uh, as I mentioned in the Hiroshima case study, uh, new transport initiatives such as MOS and ABT system uh, increase the touch point with the other domains uh, beyond the transportation, such as retails and tourism. So this will uh, create a positive spiral uh, in which the value of the entire ecosystem improve and resulting in the uh, development of public transportation itself. I'm sorry to say this brings us to the end of today's seminar. I hope that you found it interesting and thought provoking. Personally, I've found it encouraging to hear that the potential to build more open and sustainable transport systems, in particular building back from post-COVID, doesn't mean that we're going back to where we were before, but rather we can aim for a new green recovery that includes systems, services and operations being more robust and able to withstand shocks such as pandemics and disasters. As we move forward, rather than just moving people around a city, we're looking for new forms of mobility services, many of which will rely on how well we can use and exploit new technology and the data that it can gather. There are new challenges in the funding of these technologies and in the use, for example, of privacy was an issue that was touched on today. But by sharing knowledge and experience, we, as we have done today, we can create better policy and practice together. I would like to thank today's panelists, Wu Chong Um from ADB, President O oh from Easts, and Koti, and Ms. Goya from NEC. Finally, I would like to thank the Asian Development Bank for allowing NEC the opportunity to host this seminar. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time.